good afternoon all uh, i thank uh, the organizing committee for giving me this wonderful opportunity and i stand before all the expertises and uh, i present just my preliminary work although it is not the primary work but uh, the main work that i focus is on a coral reef survey but uh, while we working on this coral reefs we come across lot of jellyfish blooms although we could not spend a lot of time on it but uh, whatever we have obtained the data that i am going to present here that's why we put uh, the title underexplored jellyfish blooms in some locations so a lot of introduction has already been given for this nidarians and chinophore but i just would like to give small introduction mostly the jellyfish will have this uh, these four phenomena bio optical phenomena one is uh, bioluminescence and fluorescence pigments and iridescence Bioluminescence can be seen only visually through our naked eyes, or by giving a stimulation by splash or any mechanical or uh, uh, chemical stress. Or whereas in the fluorescence, we can see only through uh, by giving external light sources uh, like uh, high energy wavelength light, like uh, UV light or blue light. And the pigments also we can see we can see through visually naked through naked eyes. whereas the radiance also can be seen only on in presence of uh, a light where uh, the refle- uh, refracted light uh, that uh, gives the radiance radiance effect so the background of this study is like the, there are a lot of limitations in documenting jellyfish blooms in india if we can see here is i have categorized three different uh, individual and institutional and societal when we come to the individual there are safety concerns that uh, we cannot reach uh, many locations and uh, considering the rough seas or other local environmental conditions we could not able to reach out some of the areas and also uh, there are re- uh, regulations or legislations from the local uh, governments that's why we cannot access some of the areas particularly the island uh, island setups and also there is a limited funding and a lack of equipments or consumables to carry on our basic research on jellyfish blooms and institutional wise also certainly there is a limitation of research infrastructure in particularly the whatever i am presenting here is i am talking mostly about indian scenario so the uh, limited infrastructures in various uh, research institution along the coastal uh, coastal areas and also the limited funding and also whoever are working in this particular field they are already prefixed to some of the locations which are already well studied so that is why they could not able to extend uh, explore the new locations where uh, we find uh, some of the uh, rare uh, jellyfish blooms the, that i'm going to present here and the societal the lack of awareness about jellyfish blooms for uh, particularly uh, local fishermen and uh, 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 their communities and also uh, lack of local contacts so that we could not be able to establish the local contacts to uh, get the uh, a seasonal data about the uh, this um, jellyfish blooms and also lack of support uh, financial support from uh, government or from any particular uh, other uh, sources so based on these uh, limitations uh, we have uh, uh studied uh, four five different locations in uh, uh, across the india uh, two are in uh, andaman and one is in gulf of manar and two are from uh, maharashtra and goa coast so we have used uh, in uh, uh, underwater camera as i mentioned uh, we mostly primarily focused on coral reef surveys we used uh, underwater camera and uh, gps coordinates we have taken wherever we uh, found this jellyfish blooms and we the small uh, medusa or uh, other small jelly uh, jellies are collected in this uh, uh, tarsum bot uh, sample col- sample container or ziploc bags using this uh, uh, hand net or scoop net the samples are transported in ice box to the laboratory by fixing in the ethanol or uh, are in a uh, 5 4% formalin so mostly we uh, focused uh, on the stranded jellyfish blooms or uh, jellyfish blooms that are uh, away from the subtidal or uh, little bit open o- open sea site and also the some of the blooms are observed underwater in the reef regions 
so i just given here uh, only few examples uh, drip gel is mostly these are uh, uh, in uh, uh, biomass is very less which are uh, prone to drift away by the winds uh, and uh, waves and they come on shore on this strand and uh, the other uh, jellyfish that i referred here is current falling jellyfish so there are uh, sayings like uh, uh, some jellyfish they follow the current pattern particularly the pelagia noctiluca so that is why what we have recorded is this is from uh, gulf of manar you can see the entire uh, chain kind of stretch it's about uh, more than a kilometer i have taken only to one particular uh, uh, area but uh, this is about uh, almost two kilometer uh, far away and uh, other free living jellyfish which are uh, in terms of biomass they are huge and they can be seen uh, in a large number but uh, they are not, they will not uh, form chains neither uh, they will not uh, drift away they just uh, uh, swim uh, freely and underwater blooms this uh, cassiopeia uh, particular uh, genera that we have recorded from the gulf of manar it, it has the ability to form uh, blooms so we actually what we have done is the, the quadrants we have taken uh, whatever we use for the reef service that we have laid and uh, approximately we have counted uh, what will be the uh, uh, number of uh, jellies that can be uh, documented within a transect one meter one meter square transect and these are the results uh, so mostly if you can see uh, the number can be ranged from uh, 50 minimum 50 or uh, 30s depends on the species to from uh, uh, that is a minimum number and uh, it can go up to 1000 in case of pelagia noctilica so this is the biggest jellyfish bloom that i have we have ever recorded in the huge number within a one meter square uh, quadrant so the uh, uh, the next one is Arelia rita that can able to form uh, up to 200 numbers uh, per meter square so but the based on these results what we can interpret is like uh, these blooms are uh, uh, geograph specific if you can see in andaman only arelia arita is very frequently found in each and every year and particularly before uh, pre-monsoon and the people say that uh, this arelia arita blooms comes from the deeper water so that indicates that uh, monsoon is arriving so but the scientific validation of this particular uh, uh, saying is uh, not validated but uh, people used to say that so this is uh, uh, about andaman and uh, when we talk about gulf of manar this uh, cassiopeia and uh, pelagica noctilica are very uh, commonly seen but uh, this particular uh, two species but the bloom is we have encountered for the first time in uh, 2019 and uh, this is uh, every arelia rita blooms can be seen every year uh, there is no exception unlike uh, other uh, species and uh, in terms of uh, this uh, goa western west, uh, western arabian sea uh, west coast of india sorry so the chrysocera uh, chrysocera uh, species are forming and the crambionella are forming uh, very frequently the blooms as mentioned sarvan raj uh, and other uh, two of our colleagues they also highlighted the same so mostly these three particular species having uh, bloom formation in the western arabian sea whereas in the eastern uh, 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 east coast of india mostly this pelagica noctilica and this uh, arelia rita having this particular bloom forming uh, uh, ability so uh, this is the example of pelagia noctilica the close up shot of uh, this particular bloom so you can see is uh, starting and you can see a light color here it goes up to several kilometers so our idea is to i mean uh, the date and times and latitude longitude uh, that the details we have and we are going to just uh, uh, map it through satellite uh, imaging so this can form uh, we are unsure whether this uh, this uh, chain formation of bloom is uh, due to a current pattern or they have their own uh, uh, pattern forming a uh, chain forming uh, uh, ability like this so we we are uh, uh, not sure and uh, we have to validate that also and the negative impacts of jellyfish blooms that we have encountered throughout all our coral reef surveys are as follows 
so mostly we try to collect some uh, phytoplankton or uh, phytoplankton samples uh, that time uh, we when we operate uh, not i have just given a for example this uh, uh, pelagian octiluca but there when we operate this plankton net also the time that we operate plankton net before that time itself uh, these jellies accumulate and uh, uh, it becomes heavy and we cannot drag it furthermore so and we have to abort the uh, net operation so in this way it is affecting plankton research also and uh, fisheries assessment research so some of my colleagues who came for uh, uh, catching some fishes for their particular study also because of this bloom blooms uh, uh, jellyfish blooms they could not able to catch some of uh, uh, whatever the fish they wanted so although the negative impacts are a very short term but it is affecting these are the some of the areas uh, uh, scientific areas uh, that are uh, affected by the jellyfish blooms particularly coral reef uh, research also so we went uh, during this pelagian octilica uh, bloom event and uh, we had traveled around uh, 8 uh, 12 kilometers to gulf of mana one of the island here island and then when we tried to do the coral restoration we got in but uh, unfortunately the uh, this uh, chain kind of uh, bloom was not seen the other south side of the island but the sparse whatever the uh, jellies are there this uh, particular species all those when they touched us uh, it is a very uh, bad stings we got and we could not able to do the work so such a strong uh, stinging effect we got so because of these things we have to stop uh, some of these uh, uh, research aspects and uh, when this bloom fades away then we are uh, again go for uh, starting this particular research and the uh, social and there is a time and manpower consuming process involved in the when we uh, when uh, fishery uh, fisher, uh, fishermen they catch fish they have to segregate all of them and also the recreations whoever tourists or whoever goes for the uh, beach and uh, they also they will uh, they are also not permitted to enter uh, tourism also affected to some extent we did not analyze to how much but we observed and we have taken the local uh, 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 whoever have tourism operation people they have mentioned all these details economy fish catch is also limited by these jellyfish blooms so because of since few seasons wherever uh, it depends on the type of uh, species that occurs in the water jellyfish blooms that bloom comes so for see, uh, for a short time period the economy also local economy also got impacted by this jellyfish blooms environment and we do not know exactly how this jellyfish blooms ultimately uh, contributing to the dissolved organic matter thereby it's uh, uh, involving their major role in the food web and algal blooms we do not know applications of jellyfish blooms so most of the jellyfish species having the collagen as a main uh, 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 biomaterial that can be used in uh, food and supplement and cosmetic medicinal and um, other applications but uh, there are special uh, biomolecules which are associated with this, uh, this particular species aquaria victoria and pelagia and octilica this having a, a, a lot of value 50 microgram of uh, gfp is equal to almost uh, 150 dollars and 250 microgram cylinder gen is, is equal to almost uh, 380 dollars in this way the bloom whenever the bloom occurs we have to focus on uh, exploring this kind of particular molecules it depends on the species either it is collagen or other peptides or fatty acids molecules or whatever the compound in that way in that perspective we have to think and utilize them uh, i think my time is given to over i'll just skip this ongoing research currently we are focused on dna barcoding of some jellyfish and uh, we are uh, edna identification we are uh, identifying from the coral reef areas and also we are trying to identify what kind of uh, symbiotic clades are associated with this jellyfish whether those are the same clades are uh, obtained from the corals also or uh, this can be transferred from, uh, from jellyfish to corals it can be transferred and all uh, that we do not know so we are trying to understand what can be the the clade patterns within the jellies and this and we are trying to understand the subs the kind of substratum that is being 
pro, uh, provided for this particular uh, jellies in the reef environment. Mostly we come across with most of these species in the coral reef areas. So we are trying to understand what kind of substrate will help these uh, jellies to settle in the reef areas. And uh, bioprospecting of jellyfish. So whoever are uh, interested in these particular uh, uh, topics, you please do let me know so that we can have a possible collaboration work. Research and uh, research gaps. As I mentioned, I take one minute. Here. Jellyfish larval settlement areas in coastal areas are least documented, including reefs. So we know the blooms, but we do not know where exactly these larvae settle in the coastal areas or coral reefs. That we have to focus, and uh, the symbiotic clades also we have to explore. And the main thing is fisher folk. They know better, they know a lot of uh, things about jellyfish than uh, scientific uh, people, scientific reports or than uh, scientific sightings. So we have to make uh, them to involve in this particular research so that we'll get better uh, uh, data. Awareness and involvement of fish work is very, very essential. And sustainable utilization of jellyfish blooms has to be made, has to be made mandatory. Uh, we have to teach them to store the blooms and thereby we can uh, uh, utilize such kind of uh, uh, material for industries in future. And the integrated eDNA with the remote sensing can be used for uh, forecasting jellyfish blooms. And uh, I think our colleagues, they mentioned jellyfish associated microbes, parasites and fauna are to be assessed. Feeding the behavior of turtles and other animals on uh, various jellyfish need to be monitored. And uh, uh, bio waste. Uh, this is one of the main important thing the discarded uh, jellyfish material has to be utilized for uh, valorization and biomedical application we have to explore the possibilities and in the 2018 uh, for characterizing gfp uh, osama shimamura he got the nobel prize so in this particular generation how can we revolutionize this particular uh, uh, area on using jellyfish what we can do whether we can focus on management or sustainable utilization what can be done that we have to think. In. And I thank all my colleagues from uh, NIO and NCCR, Pondicherry University, JSA and ICAR. Thank you.